Okay guys, welcome back to part three of the Pamo Stroker build. If you've been watching already, we've got to the part where we've stripped the old engine down to its spare block. And at this point, I thought it'd be prudent to put in a little bit of a video showing you what happens when you put the camshafts into the new cylinder head. So on the bench here, I've got the, the cylinder head laid out. I've actually got the intake camshaft in at this point, but we'll be coming back to that at the end of the video. And at the moment, I'm just removing the lifters from the diesel that I've been storing like that for months. You've seen a video, hopefully, about me cleaning these lifters previously. By the end of this, we're going to have both camshafts into the head and the head then effectively ready to go on the block. So at the moment what I'm doing here is I'm just draining out any excess diesel from the clean lifters. Each one of these lifters has been kept in its own specific pot with an engraving on the outside of the glass jar so that I know which cam tray sort of slot that they relate to. And I'm going to get them all out and lay them all out in front of the cylinder head and I'm going to get the whole cam tray or the, the lifter tray. I'm going to grease it all up and slide them in. Sounds pretty naughty. And I'm going to slot that down onto the head. There's going to be no magnets involved here. You don't need that sort of thing if you've got the head on a bench. You'll come to see what I'm talking about in a few minutes. But we do have to take a lot of care here at this point to make sure it's nice and clean. Um, as you can see, I'm working in a filthy garage. So I'm doing my absolute best to make sure everything's wiped down and there's no grit. There's no dirt on the outside of the lifters, especially where they run in and out the cam tray. On the head of the lifter and on the base of the tip of the lifter piston itself. And then once we've got that, we'll grab the tray and I'll show you what sort of preparation we've got to do with the tray. Okay, so we get the assembly lube out. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to dot a little bit of assembly lube on the top of all the valves. Obviously, the lifter's going to sit against that, so I want to have a barrier layer of assembly lube in there before I start the engine so that I don't get any kind of nasty grinding on the top of the valves. That would be very bad, obviously. I'm using a little paintbrush to do this. I found it was probably the easiest way to get it down and in there and control it without there being, you know, massive gloops of the stuff running down on top of the springs. Similarly here, you can see I'm using the same paintbrush just to brush a little bit, not a crazy amount, just a smearing inside of each one of the cam lifter holes there. Once we've got all this done, we can start putting the lifters down into those cam holes. I'm using here the Permatex assembly lube that came with the copper spray gasket that I'd seen. It seems pretty much the same as Torco assembly lube that I've used before. It's bright red in colour so you know where you've put it. It's nice and thick and gloopy and it seems to have done the trick absolutely fine. Gets all over all the bits you want it to and not where you don't want it, thankfully. I'm now going to start putting each lifter into each cam tray, making sure the orientation of the tray is the right way around, obviously, before I start doing this. And just push them in and slot them down. Now the assembly lube is going to hold them in there to some degree. But one of the tips I learned from watching one of Alberto Big Boost's videos, when he had the engine on an engine stand, he was able to rotate the engine so that he wasn't putting the lifters down vertically and thus the lifters are falling out of the tray. So what you're going to see me do here in a minute is once I've got these last two lifters in, that's uh, one there and the last one, the easiest way I found is just to lift the head and rotate it up towards me so that I'm basically putting the lifter tray on horizontally and as it slides onto the, the M7 studs, the lifters stay exactly where you want them. No problem at all. Easy as pie. There we go. So that's it basically on there. Make sure it's located with the dowels. So I'm just getting it sort of slotted in place and then I give it a little tiny tap home with a hammer. Now, I'm, I'm not joking. It's the smallest hammer I've got. I'm just giving it the lightest of taps. There are little locating rings around some of the dowels on the actual head itself that need to be located on the cam tray so that it sits straight and it sits true. So I'm just making sure that it's engaged in them and it's going all the way down into the head so it sits nice and flush before I start putting a cam and putting any caps on. So there we go. Next process here is to put a bit more lube uh, just on the top of the actual lifter buckets themselves. And then what we want to do is we want to get all the bearing surfaces. So we're going to lube up all the, the cam tray bearing surfaces and then all of the cam cap bearing surfaces. Obviously, this is quite crucial, guys, if you're building an engine from scratch and it's nice and clean. So you want to get enough lube in there that, you know, you've got a nice layer of grease so that when everything starts up for the first time, it doesn't just grind metal and you have horrible time. So here we go. We're just doing all the caps now. A bit later on in this video, you're going to see me actually change one of these caps. I'm not sure if I've got enough time to talk about it then. So whilst we're lubing these up, I'll explain that one of the caps, the front one from my 323, was slightly different to the tray that I'm using here. Uh, and it needed to be swapped out. I'll explain why in a second. So now the camshaft goes in nice and gently and we want to turn the camshaft so like in my previous video it's not engaging all the valves completely but it's just beginning to engage two of the, the buckets or four of the buckets should I say. So what I'm doing here is just making sure the orientation is correct. Now what's going to happen here is I'm going to put all the caps on 
and then I'm going to tighten down just two of them, the two that are actually going to be under tension. So they kind of pinch the cam in two part points and they draw it inwards. It's not the perfect way of doing this job. The perfect way would be to use a special BMW tool that pushes the entire camshaft down on an even basis across the length of it. And that would then compress the buckets evenly. But most of the lifter buckets or the lifters themselves are not actually engaging the valves at this point. So by doing just the two caps, you're effectively doing the same thing. And I'm going to be very gentle with how I do this. So I'll put all the caps on and then get the hardware, so the nuts, which are M7 11mm headed nuts. And I should at this point be able to thread them all on just a couple of threads. Once I've done that, I can then start tightening down just the two caps that I want to tighten down a quarter turn at a time so I don't break the camshaft. I will be honest, this is the exhaust non-Vanos camshaft I'm putting in here. And this was pretty nerve-wracking when I was doing it. You know, I've done this sort of thing before, but this camshaft had come all the way from Lithuania. I didn't have a spare. This is a one-off sort of shot that I had here. I really took my time and I wanted to make sure that nothing was going wrong. So I will, I will admit to being rather slightly nervous when it came to this part of the, uh, the build. Okay, so that's all of our nuts, I believe, now screwed on. Uh, we can now start playing with the two caps, which are the tightest, which are two and five here, I think. Or is it three and five? There's one, two, three, yeah, cap three and cap five, I think are the ones are going to begin tightening. So there we go, there's a little quarter or a half a turn, one, two, three, and four, and then we repeat that process. And what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to use those to draw the camshaft down, and then I'll be using my hands just to finger tighten the rest of the nuts, because they essentially then are just loose, you know? There's no tightening on them whatsoever, so just keep working those down nice and slow, taking my time. I don't want to put too much pressure on one before I do on the other, or you'll end up with the cam sort of going down at an angle. I'm just tightening up the rest to take up the slack, although that you know, could be done right at the end if you wanted to. But I figure it's probably sensible just to keep working them all down gently. As you can see, I'm using my fingers. I don't need to use the socket and the, the ratchet for that. Again, back to number three and number five. Just taking up any slack, if there is any. And quite quickly, although it looks like a slow process, you'll get to the point where those two cam caps are sitting flush with the cam lifter tray. Once you're at that point, you know it's time to start torquing things down properly. So I think at this bit, we're getting close to there. Just winding the rest in by hand, by finger tightness. Still working a little bit more on caps five and cap three. Right, this is one that I was talking about I had a bit of a problem with. So this, this cam cap, I'm not entirely sure why, but it was slightly different to the tray that this came from. This tray is from, I believe, I think this is from the M54. And this tray had a locating dowel underneath cam cap one. As you can see, as I've turned that cap out over, this I think is from my 323, and it doesn't have the space or the cut out, the counter bore for that dowel. So I go and I just rob one here from the M52 head. This is the same as the one from the M54. So it's not quite as clean, but I'm going to give it a quick wipe up, make sure it's as clean as I can get it on the bench, and then we'll use this one because it actually fits this cam lifter tray better than the one that I'd used from the 323. This one has got the counterbore cut so that I can put it down over the dowel and make sure it sits nice and flush with the head. Right, unfortunately, we had a bit of a weird filming session here. So this part is me putting in the intake camshaft. We've jumped back in time here, and I'm only showing this part of the video just to show you the torque process and going through it. As far as I've read, there's no order to torque these, these nuts down in, but a lot of people say to do it from one end of the camshaft to the other. I believe that you want to take them all down in an even pattern like you want to do with most aluminium parts. So when I get the torque wrench out in a second, you want to set it, I think, to 15 Newton meters. Double check that just for your own knowledge, folks, if you're doing this. And you work your way along these in a crisscross pattern or from the middle to the outside and you torque them all down nice and snug with the cam lifter tray. This is the part that's really quite crucial. You don't want to go too tight with these or you'll end up crushing the caps and that will bind onto the camshaft and you'll end up with a horrible problem on your hands. So you can see here I'm sort of working, I actually seem to have worked from the back into the middle and then from the middle out to the left hand side. So the first thing I would say is I've done the two caps which are the tightest to begin with and then I go back and I check every one of them to make sure that none of them have gone soft or have loosened off me at all. That's pretty much it. That's your process done. The only thing I'd suggest that you do if you're going to be doing this yourself is once you've got it all binded, all uh, tightened down and all torqued, take out your 24 or 25 millimeter spanner, put it on a hexagonal area on the camshaft and turn the camshaft. Obviously make sure it's lifted up or the head is on a couple of blocks of wood so that the valves don't touch your workbench. 
but make sure that that cam can rotate freely and it's not binding. If it is binding, take the cams back a little bit, take the caps off, have a little look and see what's going on. Don't put the thing inside the car and try and start it up without being absolutely sure that that cam is not going to bind. There you go, folks. That's it. That's all there really is to putting the cams in. Let's get on with the rest of the process. In the next video, hopefully, we'll start building up the new Stroker build. Thanks for watching, as always, guys. That's it. Pay more out.